Let's look at the TLC 5615 10-bit SPI DAC with an Arduino Uno and see what we can do with it. A digital to analog converter allows you to take numbers and it will convert them into voltage levels so you can send it a bunch of different numbers and reconstruct or generate from scratch a unique waveform. And the TLC5615 is a 10-bit DAC running at 5 volts, which is convenient for Arduino Uno. And it has an SPI interface, which is faster than other I2C DACs. With 10 bits, 2 to the N would be 1024. So you can enter in numbers between 0 and 1023 to represent a DAC output voltage between 0 volts and whatever the maximum happens to be. And although this DAC runs at 5 volts, when we look at the specs, the analog full-scale output voltage is two times the voltage reference. What is a voltage reference for a DAC or an ADC? It's basically a frame of reference used to evaluate an incoming analog voltage or a generated output DAC voltage. So it should be very precise to guarantee generating or interpreting correct voltage levels. So hopefully the people who designed this DAC module put the correct kind of reference on, but it does seem to work, so we'll go with it. And in general, for these specs, they're using a voltage reference of 2.048 volts, which is also what I measured on this specific module. So 2.048 times 2 is just about 4.1 volts maximum out. All we need to basically know is we connect up these SPI communication pins to the Arduino, where we can send out data between 0 and 1023, there's an onboard voltage reference on this module. We give it 5 volts and ground, and then we have an analog output between about 0 and 4.1 volts that we can use for other circuits. For this little demonstration, I've got three basic things set up. I'll be connecting the SPI pins here, taking power and ground from Arduino, 5 volts, to power the module. Then the analog output is going to go to a breadboard, and I'm going to branch it out into different things. I'll have an oscilloscope so I can look at a generated sine wave and ramp wave. I'll also use it as a control voltage on a 555 tone generator, and I'll use it as a reference voltage on a little comparator test circuit. Here's the entire setup with an Arduino right here the DAC module floating in the air because the pins were right angle and the only way I could get DuPont wires cleanly on was to leave it hanging. I couldn't just dock this easily into a breadboard. So 5 volts and ground are coming from Arduino to the breadboard here. The module is getting power from the breadboard and the analog output voltage is on this breadboard as well and I'm taking that analog voltage and sending it off to the second breadboard to control a couple of circuits. The LED is connected to a comparator circuit and it's just flashing as things change in here, but we'll look at that when we evaluate the circuit performance. And there's a 555 audio oscillator here. The audio output of this 555 goes to this amplifier through a signal wire and a ground return and we're using an oscilloscope to look at the signals. In order to talk to this DAC, I'm going to use this Arduino Max library I found. It can be downloaded as a zip from GitHub, but it's also available within the Arduino IDE if you do a library search for this. And here's basically how you use it in your sketch. And looking at the sketch I came up with, I'm going to create a sine wave, a ramp wave, and then do some custom things to control the tone generator and the comparator. I'm going to use four inputs to switch between the various modes of waveforms I want to generate. I'm not actually going to use buttons though, I'm just going to take a wire to ground and manually touch them to those pins. Just some variables to help track what I'm doing, initialize the DAC, and to control what mode I'm actually in based on what buttons I've pressed, I've got all these states set up so I can generate a fast or a slower sine wave, fast or slower ramp, or generate a little sequence of different voltages for the 555 circuit, or a fixed low or a fixed higher voltage reference for the comparator. 
By default on reset, I just want it to start generating the faster sine wave. If I am in the mode where I'm generating a bunch of outputs for changing the pitch of the 555 tone generator, I chose 12 different tones. So to generate the voltage between around 0 and 4 volts, I'm just outputting numbers between 0 and 1023, which will equate to different audio tones if this is hooked up to a 555 control voltage pin. To generate a sine wave, I have this program memory table, so 256 data points to generate a sine wave stored in program memory, and I generated this from daycounter.com. There's a sine wave table generator, so you can enter in how many points you want in your array, and for a 10-bit DAC, the maximum amplitude will be 1023, which is around 4 volts, and the numbers per row, that's just for convenience. I chose 8 wide, just so that it stacks neatly like this. In the setup, of course, I set my button inputs as inputs with internal pull-ups, initialize the DAC. Then in the loop, every time we start the loop, I just run a function to check if any buttons have been asserted, and if so, I change the state that I want to run in. If no buttons have been pressed, no big deal, we just continue running whatever state we were in. When I first run the sketch, it's doing a fast sine wave, so I need to adjust the time base. And here it's about 101 hertz, going as fast as it can through the loop, as set up now. And the peak-to-peak -peak voltage is 4.08 on the scope readout, which is about what we expect from the reference voltage times 2. If we zoom in on this, yeah, if I zoom in a lot, I can see a lot of little ripply noise. And I'm not using the finest resolution of a sine wave. This was just to get an example, so that's okay. Now, if I toggle digital input 4 to ground, I can change to a slower sine wave. That 101 hertz has now slowed down to about 3.7 or so hertz. So on reset, we are in the sine wave fast mode. All we're doing is sending an analog write out to the DAC by reading from program memory whatever position we're in for the sine wave table that we just looked at, which starts at position 0, and that would be sending out 512, which is half of 4 volts. And then we keep stepping through as we increase this sine table position. If we get to the end of the sine wave table positions, we go back to zero, and the next time through the loop we're starting over generating a whole new sine wave. So we're doing one step at a time each time through the loop. So we send out that very first data point on the sine wave, and then we break out of this switch case, and that's basically the end of the loop. So we come back to the start of the loop, check again, are there any buttons pressed to change the mode? If not, we're still in fast sine wave mode, and we've incremented our position, so now we send out the next data point. So let's go look at what happens in this check button function. This is a sequential set of if statements to check each button, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So if we pressed this first button, this one changes the run mode to a bunch of changing fixed voltages and that's what we're using to change pitch on a 555 oscillator. If we press the next button, we're changing our run mode alternately between sending out a constant lower or constant higher reference voltage for a comparator circuit. The next button would change between a slow and fast sine wave, and the final button changes between a fast and slow ramp wave. So when a given button is pressed, I'm checking, are we already in slow mode? If so, toggle it to fast. If we're already in fast mode, toggle it to slow. And if we weren't in fast or slow mode because we were doing something totally different, let's just default it to fast mode. And since I'm not using any debouncing or interrupts, I'm still likely holding the button low in real time. So we just stall here until I release from ground. The button goes high. Now that's my way of debouncing, and we just continue on, get out of this check button function, come back and see what mode we're in. So if we were in sine wave fast, and we pressed that button, and now we toggled to sine wave slow, the only difference is we're delaying one millisecond between each sample that we're sending out. Very similar for a ramp, fast or slow, we're just delaying or not. But how we're generating the ramp, 
we start with ramp position equaling zero, and we increase it after we send it out. So we start at zero volts, and the next time through the loop it'll be 1 and 2 all the way up to 1023. If we exceed 1023 we start over at 0. So what we're doing is sending out every possible voltage the DAC can do between 0 and 1023, all 10 bits, and then going back immediately to 0 and doing the same thing again, generating a positive ramp. Even though we can't really generate too fast of a waveform like a function generator, this is still useful for things like a low frequency oscillator. We slowly want to increase and or slowly want to decrease so that we can impact things like audio oscillators or filters and do some neat effects. If I ground digital 5, I can turn on a ramp waveform. And this would be the slowed down version. So this is just under 1 hertz, 934 and a half millihertz. So it's slowly ramping up and then immediately starting at 0 volts again and slowly ramping up and so on. And peak to peak voltage is 4.04 .04 volts between 0 and max. If I toggle that button again, we'll change the speed. Now it's a lot faster, so I change the time base. Now we have 25.5 to 26 hertz of the same waveform and the same voltage. So this is without inserting any delays, letting it just go as fast as it can for this particular sketch. What we're doing is sending out between value 0 all the way one by one up to max 1023 for 10 bits, and then starting over sending out 0 all the way up. And by changing what we're sending out, we can make our own arbitrary waveform if we want. If we're playing with the 555 tone pitch, we're just cycling through this array of voltage steps, increasing from 0 to 11. And if we exceed that, we go back to 0. So we're basically setting a bunch of arbitrary voltages, going to the 555. And that keeps changing the pitch of this oscillator, generating a little melody. For the 555 tone generator circuit, I have an A-stable multivibrator here. And depending if the output happens to be in a high or low state at any given time, this timing capacitor will charge or discharge, depending if this is high or low, through this resistor. And as that capacitor charges or discharges, between one-third and two-thirds of VCC, based on how the 555 works internally, the output will toggle. So if the output is high and this capacitor is charging, it gets up to two-thirds VCC, the output switch is low, and now the capacitor starts discharging down to one-third VCC, and then the output switch is high and the cycle repeats. And if we make use of this control voltage pin and apply a voltage here, we can manipulate the two-thirds VCC level. So if we put a lower voltage, for example, that's only half of VCC, 2.5 volts in this case, we only need to charge up to 2.5 volts and discharge from there, which doesn't take as much time. So the output changes faster and we get a higher frequency. So we can change the frequency of the oscillator by changing this control voltage. And that's what we're doing here with a DAC voltage between 0 and 4.1 volts using Arduino. Of course, if we wanted to change this control voltage a lot faster and change it all over the place and slide it up and down, we could generate sound effects or musical effects to go with the basic bland square wave tone. But for now, we're just going to do simple melodies. And with this being on the control voltage pin of a 555 oscillator, if I turn on this audio amplifier and listen to the 555, each of these different control voltages will represent a different oscillator frequency and a different audio tone. So the higher the control voltage goes, the lower the frequency is and the lower the tone is because the capacitor has to charge up to a higher voltage which takes longer and then as well it has to discharge that amount of time and so it takes longer and you have a lower frequency. And for the comparator test, if we're generating a fixed lower voltage, we're just writing out 
a value of 600, which will represent a certain voltage, or we're sending out a value of 950, which is a higher voltage, and we just send out that same constant level over and over until we change modes. For this comparator circuit, we're also using the DAC as a fixed voltage reference that we can change if we want, and that circuit looks like this. I didn't have a comparator specific part, so I'm using a 741 just with a single supply, 5 volts and ground. The output will go from high to low and turn an LED on or off. Operating as a comparator, if this non-inverting input is higher voltage than the inverting input, the LED will be on because the output of the op amp will go high and complete that circuit. So we're keeping this inverting input at a fixed level. Then through a light dependent resistor, we're gonna change the non-inverting input voltage above and below the inverting input voltage and turn the LED on and off just to look at how the comparator works. But then we're gonna change this reference voltage and it will require us to either have a slightly higher or slightly lower LDR voltage in order to turn the LED on. The less light we have hitting the LDR, the higher its resistance will go, which will increase this non-inverting input voltage. So as it gets darker when we cover the LDR, this voltage will rise and eventually turn on the light if we can reach this VREF threshold. So we're just setting a fixed voltage reference here and allowing the LDR to go above and below it, triggering at whatever VREF we happen to be set for at the time. Right now, the blue trace on top is the DAC output voltage, and that's going to the voltage reference of a comparator with an LED. The yellow bottom trace is the voltage on the non-inverting op-amp input, which is basically the output of the voltage divider formed by a 43K pull-up and an LDR to ground. As I change the light hitting the light-dependent resistor, when I make it darker, the resistance will go up. Therefore, the voltage on that non-inverting op-amp input will go up, and this yellow trace voltage will go up. And when the voltage on that non-inverting input rises above the reference voltage on the inverting input, the LED will go on. The ultimate result right now, when I block this with the white paper, the LED does start to come on, but it's not on very strong. And we can see the LDR voltage is only barely making it to that set point. So the LED is just barely on. It's not fully triggered. So if I lower the threshold with digital input 3 being grounded again, just blocking it a little with that paper, I can easily get above the threshold again. So that's one application where we may want to be able to change a reference voltage, a set point, a control voltage, etc. So there's a few things we can do with a DAC with an Arduino. If you found that interesting, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, consider subscribing if you haven't already. See you on the next video.